Hello and welcome back to another video. Driving a car fast on circuits, all about managing weight transfer to maximise the friction circle. Today we're going to talk about weight transfer and how it affects a car on track. My name is David Pittard, I'm a Nürburgring champion, international racing driver and driver coach with over 20 years experience in the motorsport industry. This video is a continuation of the How To Motorsport series. In previous videos, we've looked at using your vision to maximize on track driving, as well as my part one video of this video, which is all about the friction circle. Today, we're gonna to look at weight transfer and how it is affected, how it directly affects the friction circle and what you can do as a driver to use weight transfer to your advantage to make you faster on circuit. So let's start in a similar format to my previous video and define a few things. What do you need to know about weight transfer? Point number one, the majority of a car's mass or weight is suspended between the suspension. So it is a moving mass in between the four points of contact to the ground connected by springs made up of suspension. So it is able to move and therefore transfer between each wheel. The purpose of suspension, as well as absorbing bumps, is to manage the weight transfer when the car is exposed to acceleration forces, uh, accelerating, negative acceleration, or cornering in either way. Weight transfer is the change of normal force of each tyre when the car is exposed to an acceleration about the centre of gravity. Weight transfer occurs during longitudinal acceleration, so accelerating and decelerating, and this is described as pitch, squat or dive, and also in lateral acceleration on side to side, which is described as roll. Due to suspension design and suspension kinematics, the contact patches also change during these areas of weight transfer. And as mentioned in the uh, grip circle, these contact patches changing will greatly affect the handling of the car at certain points of the corner, depending on the weight transfer. So I mentioned that the circle of grip and also weight transfer are directly related. And in the example I used in part one, there is one single circle of grip, which is used to represent a single tire. So there's four circles of grip for each of the four tires on a car. When you start to increase the normal load, the weight transfer and the contact patches through general driving, this means that the friction circles are actually expanding and contracting depending on those factors which means that weight transfer is hugely important when it comes to monitoring and managing the balance and handling of a car. And a good driver can use it to advantage to optimize performance on track. Now let's look at more practical observation. Again, looking at a very basic corner and then breaking that corner down into specific areas and looking at how the weight transfer is going to affect the handling of the car in each of those stages. So first of all, we'll start with approaching the corner at constant speed. So zero acceleration laterally and zero acceleration longitudinally. So for a constant speed heading to the corner, the car is completely flat and we've given it a 100% value of weight evenly distributed between the four wheels. So there's 25% of the weight being distribu distributed between all four wheels because there is no acceleration uh, pitching the weight backwards or forwards or side to side about the center point or center of gravity of the car. It's also worth noting that all the contact patches are the same as well because the weight distribution is evenly distributed. There's no squash on the tire which expands the uh, tread pattern but we'll talk about that in part three of the video before we touch on it in this video now. So now we'll look at the maximum braking phase. At this point here, the car is experiencing a negative acceleration longitudinally about the center point of the car, which means that the car is pitched forward. The, the front dives and the rear comes up. As a result, the weight is transferred more to the front axle than the rear axle. In this example we're gonna use, there's gonna be 40% on each of the front wheels and then 10% on each of the rear wheels meaning that the front becomes it grips up because the weight is being added to that axle allowing the normal force to increase meaning that the cornering force is going to be uh, there's going to be a higher cornering force available the contact patch is then expanded because the the tire is then squashed as that extra weight is pushed down onto the rubber Again, we'll touch on that in part three of my video series at tyre characteristics. And then the opposite happens at the rear of the car. Less normal force is transferred to the rear wheels 
meaning that there is less grip at the rear and also the contact patch reduces as well, meaning there's even more less grip. This means that in a straight line, the car is still stable um, as the car is still traveling in a straight line. However, if you were to introduce any turning at this point here, it would make the car very unstable. So now coming to part three of this right-hand corner, we are now finishing the final part of the braking, but then starting the first part of the turning. That means that there is a small amount of combination of loading going on here on the, in a longitudinal and lateral direction. So in this example, we have gone from majority of the weight transfer on the front axle and very little on the rear axle to more evenly distributed However, the front left is the most loaded wheel at 35, the front right is now 25, the rear left is 25, and the inside rear right is 15%. So that's looking at how the weight is distributed at the first point of turning. You also notice that from my friction circle video in part one, that the maximum force on each tire has now reduced. So in the braking zone, each front wheel could take 40% of the grip, but now the front left is only taking 35 because there's a combination between braking and accelerating going on for the finite amount of grip that the tire has. The contact patch on that front left will be at its maximum and the contact patch on the rear right on the inside will be at its minimum as that's where the least amount of weight is being distributed, the least amount of squash on the tyre. We then come to the apex part of the corner where all of the braking and negative acceleration should have been done and now we can transfer all of our grip that the tyre has into lateral acceleration to turn the car right. As a result the weight distribution is now even front to rear, but not even left to right. On the left hand side, we now have 30 on each of the two left hand tyres and then 20 on the right hand tyres, which means that the, the load is transferred over onto the left hand side. The contact patches on those two left hand tyres are larger and therefore that's why they can have more grip than the inside tyres where the contact patch is reducing again due to the suspension kinematics. We now head into the second combination part of the corner, the exit phase, where there's the final bit of turning and the first bit of accelerating happening. As a result of the acceleration, the car, uh, the acceleration about the centre point of the car, the car squats down on the exit, meaning there's more weight distributed to the rear axle on average versus the front axle. Uh, but because there is still the introduction of a slight amount of right turning going on, the rear left is where the maximum force is being applied and the minimum force is being applied on the inside front right. Now headed to the final part of the corner where all of the turning is completed and we can apply all of the grip into straight line acceleration. This means that now the majority of the weight transfer is transferred to the rear of the car on those rear tyres and there's a small amount of weight transfer on the front axle. I hope you can see from these diagrams what the tyre is trying to achieve at each part of the corner and I hope it helps you understand why at some turning points when you're trail braking in the rear might feel loose and also when you're exiting the corner and you're trying to get on the, the, the throttle hard, the car starts to understeer on exit. So how as a driver can you control this weight transfer to maximise the grip, circle of grips as much as possible for when you're on track? As mentioned at the beginning of this video, the weight of a car is a sprung mass. That means it is, is moving constantly between those four contact batches. Dampers are used to help modulate that weight transfer between the four wheels. However, as it is still sprung, it means it's relatively uncontrolled. Therefore, as a driver, the smoother you can be in loading up each of those contact patches and smoother you can transfer the weight between the four tires that you have, the closer you will be able to run to the edge of the circle of grip. This is because any aggressive input can shock the tyre, and again we'll talk about this in part three of this series, into overstepping the mark. And that's momentum of the mass 
can then overload the tire for a prolonged period of time for even just a small mistake a small very quick mistake it can overload the tire for a prolonged period of time and as a result cause a rotation a slide or a, a spin as a result of it so the top tip you can have which we always keep relating back to is being smooth as you can with the steering inputs smooth as you can with the throttle inputs and to a degree smooth with the braking especially when you're coming off the brake to give you a quick example on how good drivers can use weight transfer to their advantage. One good example of this is a hairpin turn versus a fast and flowing turn. On the hairpin turn, there's heavy braking involved and the entry phase, the turning phase of that corner, the good driver can actually use a little bit more brake to hold the brake more into the corner so that he's keeping more weight on the front wheels and less weight on the rear wheels and that will help him rotate the car because there's less grip on the rear more grip on the front that will help the car rotate for him and allow him to corner quicker to get a straighter exit and therefore a faster average speed through that turn if we then relate that back to a faster more sweeping corner you want to keep the car as evenly distributed as possible on turning because if you have a lot of weight on the nose and not much on the rear a fast corner it's going to be very quick and very easy to lose the rear so a good driver will be able to manage and adapt his weight transfer between the two types of corners fast and slow a good driver can also use weight transfer to overcome handling deficits so for example, if the car is understeering on turning, so the front wheels are not taking the desired path that the driver is intending because there is a lack of grip from that front axle, the driver can stay on the brake for a little bit longer to keep the weight on the nose more. That will then overcome that chassis lack of grip and as a result, he'll be able to turn the path he needs. Oversteer on entry. So if the car is oversteering on entry, it generally means that there's not enough grip at the rear at the point of turning. So where I talked about the turn-in of combining brake, the final phase of braking and the start of the turn-in, that's where the car is starting to become loose, the rear axle is losing grip. A driver can come off the brake sooner, that means that the car is flatter, the weight distribution is more even from sooner on, um, earlier on in the corner, that will mean that there's less chance of the rear braking loose so he can overcome that handling def chassis handling deficiency from his driving. So this was the second part of the three part series looking at the friction circle, weight transfer and tyre characteristics. So please make sure you check out that third and final video to get the full picture of what I'm talking about. As mentioned, these theories on physics and vehicle dynamics can be applied in the real world on a track day cars as well as in the sim racing world. And if you can start to understand these, then you'll get more of a better understanding on what you're trying to achieve when you're driving a car on the limit and therefore fast, and also a better idea of analysing what's going wrong, what's going on and how you can improve your driving. If you're interested in getting some guidance, please make sure you head to my website and get in contact to book a coaching session, be that in the real world, one-to-one, -one, uh, at a car at a track day or a test day, or in the virtual world, we can arrange a one-to-one -one session looking specifically into vehicle dynamics and how that can make you faster on the sim. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope this explained what weight transfer is and how it's useful and applicable to driving a car on the circuit. Whilst you're here, please make sure you check out this classic onboard here and check out my previous video down here about the friction circle and stay subscribed up here for more videos like this to come. Until next time, bis dann.